Good day and welcome to my discussion on control systems and quality management. You know, those techniques for enhancing our organizational effectiveness. You know, hopefully you remember from other discussions that we've had that uh, those four functions of management that I identified in another series and throughout different video lectures. In this one, we're talking about that last function, the controlling function. Hopefully you recall that controlling is the monitoring of our performance and comparing it with the goals and taking any type of corrective action needed so that we can make those goals. Control is what you as a manager do to get things done with control shown in relation to those three other management functions. Now control is a difficult managerial function. Often you're going to find that managers focus on quantitative standards that are easy to measure, but they may not be the best standards. Managers have to be concerned about the unintended consequences of setting performance standards. Control is also difficult because there are many external factors that can impact the ability of the organization to achieve those standards. You know, there are things like changes in competition or technology that advances or government policies that get put in place that can all impact our organizations. It's sometimes difficult to accurately measure our actual performance. It may also be difficult for managers to identify what specific corrective actions will actually solve the problems and bring about those desired performances. Lack of having effective control mechanisms, you know, these can lead to problems for both managers and our organizations. You know, why is control needed in our organizations? You know, control is a very important managerial activity because it identifies whether corrective action is needed or not. It is a critical step for us in determining effective performance. By comparing our actual performance to our planned performance, this helps us as managers make those critical adjustments that we need in order to achieve our desired success. Lack of control mechanisms can lead to problems for both us as managers and for our organizations. You know, to adapt to change and uncertainty is definitely one of those reasons why we need control. Our control systems can help us anticipate, help us monitor, and be able to react to those various changes that I just mentioned. We also need it to discover any type of irregularities or errors that are occurring. Cost overruns manufacturing defects. It also affects our employee turnover, you know, bookkeeping errors, customer dissatisfaction. All of these matter and may be tolerable in the short run, but in our overall long run in the organization, they can bring about even a downfall to the existence of our organization. So we need it to reduce our costs, to increase productivity, you know, to detect any type of opportunities and increases in our innovation that can come occur. Con these controls are going to help alert us to innovative opportunities that might have otherwise gone unnoticed if we didn't have these control measures in place. Here I've got the four general steps that exist as part of our control process. We need to establish standards. Well, once we establish them, well, we need to measure them. We need to measure the performance against those standards. Then we need to compare our performance to those standards and then take any corrective actions that are necessary. You will definitely come across and see how effective this is. And once again, as you've seen in many of my discussions, we have that continuous feedback loop that must exist in our processes. We have three different types of control. That's the feed forward, concurrent, and feedback. These different types of control are based on the timing of when that control takes place. That feedback control focuses on preventing any type of future problems. And this is done by collecting performance information about our past performance and then planning to avoid those pitfalls and any roadblocks prior to starting any type of new task or project. Our concurrent control entails collecting performance information in very real time. 
this is going to enable us as managers to determine if employee behavior and organizational processes conform to those regulations and standards that have been set place. And corrective actions can be taken immediately when performance is not meeting our expectations and those expectations that have been set forth by the organization. Now feedback control amounts to collecting performance information after a task or a project has been completed. We're then going to take this information and use it to correct or improve our future performances. This form of control is extensively used by both supervisors and managers, so those different levels of management. Here I'm showing you know, the different levels of control and we then we'll look at six areas of control. And these three levels of control I'm showing here are hopefully very um, hopefully they mean something to you because we've seen these terms many times again and again where we talk about strategic tactical and operation with strategic control this is monitoring performance to ensure that strategic plans are being implemented and taking those corrective actions as needed strategic control is mainly performed by those top-level managers who have the organizational wide perspective of everything and that should sound very familiar when we talked about uh, strategy or the strategic levels and tactical levels and operational levels and other discussions. Now tactical control is monitoring performance to ensure that tactical plans, you know those at the divisional or department level, that those are being implemented and taking corrective action as needed as well. And this is done mainly by our middle level managers. Operational control is monitoring our performance to ensure that those day-to-day -day operational plans and goals are being implemented and of course, when needed, take the corrective action as it's needed. And of course, this operational control is done at that lower level, that first level of management. Now, I said that there are six areas of control. I'm showing those here. Um, you know, if we just look at these, it should just you know jump out at you to make sense, right? You know, with financial, we can just take a look at that one at the bottom there. These are, you know. Are we controlling our bills? Are they being paid on time? How much money is owed by customers? How much money is owed to suppliers from us? You know, do we have enough cash on hand to meet all of our payroll obligations? You know, with you know the informational, if we take a look at that one, the informational area, this is where like you know production schedules, sale forecasts, analysis for our competition that exists, and public relation briefings, all these controls of an organization from various information services or even resources, however you want to put that. You know, our physical area. These the physical area is going to include your buildings, equipment, tangible products. Are we how are we looking at how we're performing and measuring that? Human resource areas, these controls are going to be used to monitor our employees and that's going to include such things as our personality tests, our drug testing rates, um, how's our hiring rates? What about performance tests during training, you know, what are our performance evaluations look like? And we're using those, you know, to measure our employees and our work productivity. And we have different types of different performance evaluations that we're going to employ. And, you know, looking at our employee surveys to assess our job satisfaction, are people happy to be here or not? And how well is our leadership performing? You know, we also have the, you know, structural area. This is how our organization is arranged from a hierarchical or structural standpoint. And is it correct? Do we and we should always be taking a look at this structural control because as things change, as our business develops, we may need to look at how our hierarchy or structural standpoint exists and what changes need to be made. Then we have our cultural area. You know, this is an informational method of control. You know, it's going to influence the work processes and the level of performance through our set of norms that tend to develop as a result of our cultural values and beliefs. And when I say culture, I mean our organizational culture. And that is definitely one thing you want to make sure to continue to monitor. Sometimes this kind of slips through the cracks in organizations. Don't let that be in your organization. Next, we talk about the balance scorecard. And, you know, the BSC or balance scorecard, you know, this is used in every single business. It just helps us as managers establish what our goals are and the performance measures that are according to our four strategic perspectives or four areas. You know, we have customer satisfaction. Really here you're looking at um, how do our customers see us? You know, so make sure our priority here is taking care of our customers. And remember, you have customers that are internal and external. 
with our, you know, internal processes. This is where we're looking at, you know, what do we as an organization, what do we excel at? You know, what's our quality like? Our employee skills, our productivity. Take a look at those. You know, how well are we doing with those? With our innovation and improvement activities, here we are asking ourselves, can we continue to improve and can we create value? And you know, one way that we do that is with the continued learning and growth of our employees. We need to measure that. And then of course, our financial measures. You know, this is how do we look to our shareholders? You know, what's our profitability like? You know, what's our organizational growth going to be like? You know, if we have shares, you know, what are our shareholder values? That is how we are using a BSC or a balanced scorecard. I've got an example here of a strategy map. And this is just a visual representation of a company's critical objectives and the crucial relationships that exist among them that drive our overall organizational performance. You know, the maps show relationships among a company's strategic goals. This is going to help employees understand how their individual work contributes to the organization's overall success. You know, starting with learning and growth, the arrows in the diagram show the logic that connects goals to our internal processes, to our customers, to our financial goals, and finally to the long-term goal of you know, providing that value, that shareholder value. You know, take a good look at this and hopefully you see that how this could be implemented in your organization. In every organization, we have lots of financial tools for control. Some of the ones that we find that are especially important that we see, you know, all the time are going to include things like our budgets, our financial statements, and audits, whether those audits are internal or external. These financial statements summarize our organization's overall financial status. You know, in the audits that are done, you know, whether they're internal or external, are formal verifications of our organization's financial and our operational systems. At some point, you will probably be part of, you know, either creating a budget or you might go into a role that's already got an established budget and you have to maintain that budget. It is... Um, it's not a process that people really love to work with, um, especially when you go into you know upper level management and you're presenting your proposed budget for the next year. And no matter what, they're always going to say it's not good enough. You need to find ways to lean it out or trim the budget. There are unwritten rules that people go into when they're doing budgets about you know doing some over estimating so that when those unexpected expenses come up, you have room in your budget to manage that. You know, from an IT perspective, if you're going in there and, you know, almost every business now has a dependency on the internet and having an internet connection. And if you go in there and say, well, and someone tries to attack your budget on paying how much you pay for internet. You know, most places only have certain internet providers that they can have. And hopefully, you know, you know, as an IT professional, we have to make sure that we put in a redundancy in most things that we do. So we're going to have in a part of our budget as an example, here's how much it's going to cost us for our main internet. Here's how much it's going to cost for a backup. And sometimes, especially in the IT field, you know, upper management will doesn't see the IT budget as being very important because if things are running right, then why do we need to spend money? Well, we spend that money so that things continue to run right so we don't have loss of production. So if things are going right and we're not experiencing issues, that means I'm doing my job correctly and we're spending the money appropriately. Uh, so you have to justify your budget uh, regardless of what area you're in. And next part I wanna talk about is with total quality management or TQM. Almost every organization you go into, you're going to hear this term at some point. And TQM or total quality management, this is dedicated to continuous quality improvement and training and making sure we're providing great customer satisfaction. We are not going to be stagnant. We're always going to be looking at ways that we can improve our quality. We can continuously provide training and we continue to look at improving our customer satisfaction. Two core principles are of TQM are going to be people orientation and improvement orientation. With people orientation, everyone involved in the organization 
should focus on delivering great value to our customers. And then with improvement orientation, everyone should work on continuously improving our work processes. You know, some techniques for improving quality are going to be our employee involvement, benchmarking, outsourcing, reduced cycle time, and statistical process control. All of these are various techniques that are part of the total quality management process. You know, make sure that you're at some point you're going to have training on TQM. I know that. Um, you know, as an example, one technique with SPC or statistical process control. This is just a statistical technique, and I know a lot of people don't like the word statistical, it creates fear in them. But using stats or statistical techniques in our organizations make sure that we are being efficient and effective you know this is just a technique that's used um, where we use periodic random sampling from as an example production runs to see if quality is being maintained with a standard range of acceptability so every hundred parts we might take some out and we do some measurements on them and if they're within spec then we're good for another hundred parts and then if we do find some problems, some parts are out of spec on that next batch of 100 parts, then we have containment. We know exactly where we left off and where we're at. So we know that this is where we're going to stop. We're going to get all those parts together and we're going to pull them off and we're going to find out what's good and what's bad. And we're going to find out what's wrong because we know that something happened either in the process or in the equipment over that range of parts so we know what to fix. Uh, Six Sigma, I've got that listed here. This is another statistical analysis process and it's very detail oriented, it's very high level and it reduces our defects in manufacturing and service related processes. Um, more recently companies are using an approach known as uh, Lean Six Sigma and this focuses on problem solving and performance improvement. So essentially speed with excellence and all of our Six Sigma projects are very well-defined projects so we can measure analyze and fix or improve so I just want to provide some examples here for you now we'll look at managing our control systems effectively now there are few keys to having a successful control system and I've got those listed here so our control systems they need to be strategic and results oriented. Managers should pay attention when developing their their strategies or their plans that make sure that their control standards are absolutely going to measure how well they are doing. If they're not, they're ineffective. You know, timely means that the information is delivered at the appropriate time, and accurate means that the information should be correct. Objectively here means that the controls should be impartial and they should be quite fair. You know, our expectations should be realistic, not due to not too difficult or too easy. We're going to emphasize our positive development and our improvements. And then control systems clearly should be understood by the people who are involved in them and avoid any type of complicated stats that aren't going to be meaningful. Under the control system, our employees should be encouraged to participate and feel freely to be able to communicate while using these control systems. Now, like most things, there are going to be barriers that prevent a manager from producing a good control system. You know, we could have too much control. There could be too little employee participation. You know, I've emphasized a lot of times that employee participation in things is critical. Unfortunately, some people aren't good managers and leaders to make sure that they are uh, focusing on that employee participation. We could have an overemphasis on what are the means and not the ends. You know, we could have an overemphasis on too much paperwork. And the overemphasis could be one instead of multiple approaches. We want to make sure that we are using multiple approaches on making sure we have a good control system. Now, I've mentioned, you know, being productive many, many times. And well, what does productivity mean? You know, the purpose of a manager, well, this is to make decisions about those four management functions that we've gone over, right? Planning, organizing, leading, and this week controlling. And 
we want to make sure that we get people to achieve productivity and then realize those results. Well, when it comes to productivity in our organizations, this is you know defined by the formula of outputs divided by inputs for a very specific period of time. Productivity matters because it determines whether an organization is going to make a profit or even if it's going to continue its existence and survive. I love information technology and one of the greatest pieces of technology that larger organizations and most organizations should strive to implement is an ERP system or enterprise resource planning. These are softwares and information systems where we integrate all the different aspects of business so that managers and employees can stay on top of the latest developments. In our ERP system, we're going to include HR functions, payroll functions, engineering functions, process functions, you know, the various functions that are performed by different areas that are all that would typically and traditionally use their own different softwares for. Well, if we can incorporate that at all, we have real-time information. We have all of our information in one place and we have everyone having the same access to the software, but we will have their privileges only set to what they actually need. So they're not going, you know, someone in, um, let's just say production isn't going to have access to who's getting paid what in the organization. So we set our privileges in the software, but rather than having to manage a bunch of different software licenses and updates and all that of all these different software programs, an ERP system helps with that. Now we've taken a good look here at that last function for management, the control function, and how important quality systems and control systems are part of our organization and making sure we're meeting our goals and providing an effective and efficient process and a great customer experience. Thanks for following along with this. Hope you found this information helpful. Take care.